you. Thank you uh, to Leon for uh, his invitation and also to HEPC Scotland. Um, yeah, we, maybe we don't, you don't know about uh, French institutions, about uh, uh, teaching and public health, but French wine is famous and uh, still very famous abroad. And we will discuss a little bit about uh, uh, the role of alcoholism, I mean, alcohol use disorders uh, among French patients with hep C. <coughs> and we had very interesting uh, introduction before on uh, data comparing uh, different countries and the role of alcoholism in these different countries and I think France is a very good example and we will use uh, the uh, Fr French national discharge uh, database that is basically for those who, who are not aware we in France have a very centralized healthcare system just like the NHS but everything is recorded uh, in the same system including public and private discharge uh, summaries. So we have the opportunity to look for the whole uh, population health through the database. So how, um, what we were interested in, and somehow it's recouping uh, what was said before, we were interested in um, what may be the causes of death in patients with hep C in France. Uh, from this discharge database. And we took that example, I mean, that has been a very uh, uh, interesting uh, example through the whole research process, the example of Lou Reed. So sorry if you had uh, the song before on, but uh, it's, uh, it was a very, uh, uh, a very good showing case. So if you look at Lou Reed's biography and what happened to him, <coughs> he, died, he died at the age 71. And what, one of the ways recorded in the, in the media is that he, he, was, uh, he, was, he received liver transplant and after a long battle after, uh, against hep C, he died eventually from uh, hep C after his liver transplant. And so that's the way we record usually how Lurid died. Though Lurid is very interesting because he provides a very different perspective on his own health, which is very different from most of the uh, personalities you can see on the web, is that he said, I tried to give up drugs by drinking, which is a totally different perspective, because basically it's, it's analyzing the role of drugs at some point in, in, in his earlier life, and then how alcohol use disorders may have uh, hampered his health through his lifestyle. So we, we have kind of, uh, a kind of ambivalence between these two perspectives, is it only hep C that created the problem and ended uh, as the underlying cause of death of Lurid? Or is it alcohol use disorders who had a major impact on his liver uh, disease progression to liver transplant and then death? So basically the study rationale <coughs> was to look after uh, hep C patients in this national discharge database. And uh, the underlying rationale was that they have higher rates of comorbidities uh, as compared to other people who have no hep C. It's related to mostly the transmission of hep C, that is injection drug use, that is commonly reported by more than 50% in any surveys in Western countries. And at some point, uh, earlier on, before the discovery of hep C virus in 89, there was some uh, transmission by iatrogenic procedures. So here it's just kind of a schematic representation of what might be these comorbidities associated with hep C uh, transmission. So we have drug addiction in a large and a broader sense, that is mostly injection uh, drug use, and that we looked for. It's commonly associated with alcohol use disorders. I mean, heavy drinking at some point, and then it's becoming alcohol use disorders in the long term. It's also associated with various bloodborne uh, viruses. So hep C is the one of interest here, but it's also associated with HIV, with uh, HBV. And then we have iatrogenic transmission that is a lower, has a lower impact, I mean, it's a lower mean, uh, less frequent mean of transmission uh, of hep C that is associated with also bloodborne viruses, solid organ transplant recipient, chronic dialysis, hemophilia, and other things that we almost cannot see in the national discharge database. And we added among these comorbidities of hep C, and it's a matter of discussion, 
diabetes, because often we say that hepatitis <coughs> C is associated with diabetes mellitus, but diabetes is also commonly associated with alcohol use disorders, with HIV, and is the main factor of uh, kidney transplant, uh, kidney transplant and chronic diabetes. So this is all the factors we were interested in, not saying that chronic hep C is provoking them, but it's associated in uh, uh, it's associated with uh, chronic hep C. <coughs> so the, the the research aim was to look for the role of these different different factors on the prognosis of hep C patients in the all national uh, discharge database. So what's this? Uh, discharge database has said all public and private uh, discharge acute and post-acute care which is of interest here because all the rehabilitation of the patients is often occurring in uh, uh, post-acute care uh, so it's good to know that more than half the population of France adult population went to hospitals within five years so we not only drink but we go to hospital uh, we looked for hep C. All these uh, diagnoses were uh, based on the records found on primary and associated dis discharge uh, codes that are coded in the ICD-10 system. We looked for hep C. We looked for alcohol use disorders following a kind of standardized definition from Jorgen Heim. We looked also for the role of uh, any record of abstinence uh, for these patients who were diagnosed with alcohol use disorders. And we look for all the other comorbidities of hep C. So what are the outcomes we were interested in? Uh, any liver-related event, so here it means severe liver events. We were interested in decompensated cirrhosis, because basically all of them, they go to hospital. So we are sure that we, are, we have a complete uh, overview of the problem. So decompensated cirrhosis, worth to note that about uh, 500,000 patients in France had decompensated cirrhosis in 2008 to 2012, so it's not just like a minor problem. Uh, primary liver cancer, 77,000 patients. Liver transplant, uh, 4,500 patients. And we also look for in-hospital death. That is uh, also worth noting that uh, more than 50% of the French population dies at hospital. And uh, it's the same in Scotland, but it's a good tradition for epidemiology. So let's look at the first results and the way it's presented usually. And this is where, uh, if this study was sponsored by the big pharma, we would have stopped there. <laughs> Basically, we found 112,000 patients with hep C. That is about 0.4% prevalence among the all patients in the, in the database. 58% were men. They had a mean age at inception of 53 years old. In inception in, in, at the beginning of 2008, and we found that <coughs> uh, about 21,000 uh, severe liver events occurred in those patients, which is about 4% of all uh, severe liver events, and 15,000 died at hospital, which is about 1% of the total mortality recorded in these uh, five years, which is kind of spectacular for one disease. So the main study uh, research the purpose was to look for what are the underlying factors when you say hep C, what does it mean concretely? Oh, no, you didn't say concretely, sorry for my French. Uh, well, anyway. ah. Yeah, okay. So one of the key things is it's very, in my opinion, and uh, as this research is, is showing, it's very important to, dis dis to disentangle men and women. As we all know, men and women are very different, and uh, especially in terms of life expectancy. And as we can see here, it's also having a strong impact in terms of hep C, because they don't have the same uh, risk of unhealthy behaviors. So we had about 58% men with hep C, as compared to 42% uh, women. What you can see strikingly is that the men were much younger at hospital as compared to women. These are kind of uh, specific French epidemiology, which is not really of interest to you, but it's showing that most of the patients, I mean, a, 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 good, a substantial proportion of the patients were uh, living in the greater Paris area, which is where you have most 
of the IDU uh, problems. We had also uh, more than half the population that went to uh, tertiary care centers, mostly because it's public, and it's also correlated to the fact that these people are, on average, uh, less wealthy. About these comorbidities we discussed earlier, 58% of these men, they had any, uh, at least one other comorbidity of hep C, and 27% of uh, the women. So what are these comorbidities? Here you can see drug addiction was found in about 40% of men. Alcohol use disorders was found in 27% of men, as compared to 12% uh, in women. But we also found in very uh, substantial proportions, higher rates of diabetes, higher rates of HIV, chronic Hep B, liver transplant recipient, any, uh, any solid transplant recipient, chronic diabetes disease, and hemophilia, as compared to the general population. So this is not, uh, uh, this population of Hep C is not alike patients who are not Hep C, just to make it clear. So let's focus on outcomes. We say uh, uh, over the follow-up, more than 21,000 patients with Hep C had severe liver events. What you can see here, strikingly, is that it doesn't occur at the same age between men and women. And the median age at first liver, first severe liver event for men was 54, while it was 68, so more than 14 years older, in women. And again, the rate of comorbidities that could be associated with liver disease progression was much higher in men, 66%, as compared to women, 42%. If you look at into the details, here we performed uh, logistic regression to look to the specific impact of these different uh, comorbidities. You can see that alcohol disorders had the strongest association with liver, uh, severe liver events in this Hep C population, with an odds ratio uh, above seven. Uh, so it means patients recorded with alcohol use disorders uh, were about seven times the more likely to have severe liver events. Diabetes also was significant. HIV infection was not found significant in this study. This is adjusted ratio. Uh, chronic Hep B uh, was also associated with another ratio of about two, and also liver transplant and other solid organ uh, transplant recipients. So uh, very nicely presented by uh, Amish. What's of interest is not only the force, the strength of association between each of these factors and the fact that these patients with, were recorded with severe liver events, but also what might be the fraction attributable to each of these significant factors. So overall, for all liver-related disease, what was found is this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six factors were associ associated to more than 60% of this uh, liver-related events found in the study among Hep C patients. And the, ma the majority of, of it was explained by uh, alcohol use disorders, above 50%, with an uh, even higher impact among those who had uh, glycopensated cirrhosis, strong impact of about 50% among those who had liver transplant, and lower impact among those who had uh, primary liver cancer, but it's still above 30%. So, strong contribution of uh, alcohol use disorders to any of these liver-related events in a hep patients. The role of the other uh, factors was much lower, some, somehow uh, above 10% for diabetes, uh, but then very, very much lower for chronic Hep B and other uh, uh, solid organ uh, transplants. So now look, let's look at uh, death. <clears throat> so about 15,000 of these patients died at hospital within the five years. Again, you can see a striking difference in median age between age at death between men and women, which is more than 15 years uh, of difference on the median age. Men dying at 50, 59 years old and women 75 years old. So it's, it's not possible to say it's the same population. And again, the role of comorbidities of Hep C that was found in 71% in men and 52% of women. If we look at the different role of each of these different factors who are just associated with hep C transmission, 
we can find that alcohol use disorders was significantly as associated with death in those patients, with another ratio of about three. Diabetes was about, uh, about one significant, also HIV, chronic HIV, and uh, other solid uh, organ transplant recipients, that's including kidney, uh, kidney, kidney transplant, and chronic diabetes. Of all the different, looking again at the fraction that could be attributable to each of these factors in a multivariate uh, analysis, alcohol, again, was uh, accountable for 28% uh, of the, the death uh, recorded at hospital in those patients. And to a lower extent, diabetes is 7%, and then to a much lower extent, HIV, chronic HIV, and uh, chronic diabetes. So, given the role of alcohol use disorders among HEPC patients, at least in France, uh, we looked for what might be the impact of any record of abstinence, I mean alcohol abstinence, among those patients. So here it's a, it's a Cox model where you're interested in, you use age, age at the event, as the time scale for the Cox. I don't know if you're familiar with this kind of techniques, but basically it allows you to graph what may be the risk uh, according to the age of the patient. So here you see the comparator is patients who have no alcohol uh, use disorders recorded in the database. And in the red line, you have those who have alcohol use disorders and no record of abstinence. You can see that overall, at any time, I mean at any age, patients with alcohol use disorders are at, at about four times uh, more risk either to develop uh, severe liver related events or die at hospital. At uh, with a maximum risk at middle age, that is between uh, 35 and 55 years old. In contrast, those who had any record of alcohol abstinence had a reduced risk that we could measure and estimate a 29% uh, reduction on the overall risk, which is very significant. And to compare to the lack of data on the benefits of treatment on survival uh, among HEPC patients. So the conclusions of these studies somehow were twofold. Uh, first, the poor prognosis among French HEPC patients, of course we're very particular, is largely explained by the selection of the high-risk subpopulation. Basically, the rate of alcohol use disorders explain a majority of liver death, and to a lower extent non-liver death. It was discussed earlier on that they have People with alcoholism have much higher risks for other things than liver, uh, such as uh, uh, upper IO digestive tract cancer, I mean head and neck cancer, or pancreatic cancer, or I mean, there is a long, long list. And other comorbidities, in particular diabetes, could explain some of the liver deaths, but also a lot of non-liver death. So this doesn't fit with all the models we received so far in France, and there are all based on the same type of structure, which is assuming that the HEPC population is the same. And you attribute the benefits of a cure with a sustained biological uh, response on uh, basically all these models, cost effectiveness models, they assume that you will, with a sustained biological response, you would avoid all liver events and people would resume to the background mortality of the general population. This study is not in agreement with any of these uh, assumptions. So the consequence is that it's not proven that uh, interferon-free treatments are cost-effective, in particular in patients who have no alcohol use disorders, just think about the women, and severe comorbidity. So the second uh, conclusion is, is that this study was able to show uh, significant benefits of alcohol abstinence and this is key, uh, I think, in, in the process to lower the burden of liver disease in general, but also among HEPC patients. <coughs> and probably for those who are interested in cost effectiveness, it's worth digging into this, this, uh, this kind of uh, result. Well, thank you. I would like to thank Lourine again, who was very uh, inspiring for this research, and colleagues who here report our different uh, institutions. Thank you. Thank you.